IT stands tall among premier global universities. I thank Sudhir sir and his team. Moving on, I request Professor Abha Chauhan, President of the Indian Sociological Society, to deliver the welcome address. She is also the director of the Center of Kashmir Studies, University of Himachal Pradesh. Her exceptional leadership and unwavering support played a pivotal role in facilitating the organization of this conference. Ma'am. A very good morning and a warm welcome to the 40th All India Sociological Conference being organized at the Velour Institute of Technology, Velour. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome each one of you to this conference. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. PTR Palanavel Rajan, the Minister of Information and Technology, Government of Tamil Nadu. The Vice Chancellor, VIT, Dr. V. S. Kanchan Bhaskaran. The Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Partha Sarthi Malik. And here I would say that the Pro Vice Chancellor was very active in giving us the proposal to organize this conference. All others of VIT, the Registrar, the Dean School of Social Sciences, the organizing secretary of the conference, Dr. Prabhakar, who is actually the person behind this whole scenario. And though he is uh, not visible at so many places, but I think he is the person who has worked and his entire team day in and eight day out. On behalf of the Indian Sociological Society, I thank the entire team of VIT Velour for giving the Indian Sociological Society an opportunity to come to Tamil Nadu and organize the conference here, the 48th All India Sociological Conference. Sir, we have actually moved uh, from USTM, that is University of Science and Technology, Meghale, from northeast to south. And I believe, and the whole of Indian Sociological Society, that it is very important for us to be more inclusive, more democratic, more diverse, to visit the different parts of the country. So from northeast to south, and before that to the north, in Kashmir, in Lucknow, we have been consistently organizing the conference in different parts of the country. I'm very happy that uh, we could be joined by people from India and abroad. Professor Margaret Abraham, the former IC president, many presidents, secretaries uh, of Indian Sociological Society, the MC members, RC conveners, all life members, each and every one and who have come 
from different parts and they have actually helped us a lot in organizing this conference. The theme of the conference, the crisis of the 21st century and the way forward, we consider is a very apt theme because of the kind of crisis that are going on the world over. Uh, we just uh, finished, I would like to inform the delegates here and the dignitaries on the dais that we had a workshop, young researchers workshop, in which 29, 27 abstracts were presented and they came from different parts of the country and they discussed about their research, what they are doing and their work. So it was a very interactive session. Professor S.L. Sharma from Chandigarh, Professor Anand Kumar uh, from JNU were there and uh, so are our resource person. So uh, this is one of the activities of the Indian Sociological Society that it is a pre-conference workshop and all the research scholars who come here are also supposed to attend this conference. So I'm glad that uh, ISS is continuing uh, this tradition of organizing young researchers workshop uh, continuously. So we see that there are different crises and uh, in the 28 RCs, that is research committees, two ad hoc groups, four plenaries and uh, three memorial lectures and various other, uh, the sessions that we have, the different aspects of themes will be discussed. Conflicts, wars, violence, increasing rigid political regimes, social and economic inequalities, then the development, health issues, environment, climate change. And uh, I'm very happy that in VIT, the Department of Social Sciences is very important. And uh, you know, it's an institute of technology like uh, other IITs and where the institute of technologies are there, the importance is given to the discipline of social sciences. So I think we can give a big hand to the Velour Institute of Technology, uh, 28 uh, probably the faculty members and eight uh, faculties in the Department of Sociology, which you might not even find in many other universities. So sociology is thriving here and uh, their continuity is emphasized on the multidisciplinary, transnational and you know integrative, interactionist uh, perspective in the discipline of sociology. So we study everything, ethnicity, caste, tribe, even uh, environment, uh, diaspora, et cetera, the issues which cut across different disciplines. So I think we are absolutely at the right place. And also the kind of facilities and infrastructure that exists here and that has been provided to us. We are actually really overwhelmed by this kind of facilities that has been provided by, uh, by VIT Velour. I'm uh, just happy to note that the number of delegates have crossed 900 here and number of abstracts received is 830, which will be presented during the three days conference. I think it's a good number and a lot of people were saying that uh, Velour is very far so I said it is far because you are seeing it from northeast or north. But when people from this side go to that side, they consider those places far. So sometimes you have to travel. At times the places will be very near, at times they will be far. So it, this is the diversity, this is the beauty, I think, of these conferences. Indian Sociological Society, I will not say much, except uh, that it is a uh, 1951, it was established. We have regular journals both Hindi and English, and it has come a long way uh, to this state. Uh, yesterday I was told that the number of members, the life members has increased to 6,007, 6,007. So Indian Sociological Society is a very important, a big organization, and uh, we are uh, not only the number in quantity, but in, in terms of quality. So I'm very sure that in these three days, you know, we will have a very enriching, very fruitful interactive session. And when we go back, we will go back with very good memories of 48th All India Conference and of Velour Institute of Technology.
Well, all, thank you so much. I welcome once again all the delegates. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, warm and heartfelt welcome address. Next, we have the ceremonial lighting of the lamp. I cordially invite all our esteemed guests on the dais to join us for the same. I request our audience to please rise. Thank you. Dr. S. Prabhakar is the organizing secretary of the 48th All India Sociological Conference and the associate professor of sociology, Department of Social Sciences, VIT. He is the backbone of our team and a person who never fails to smile. Trust me, as one of the faculty coordinator, I have seen him working uh, with three laptops at the same time, with that smile. Right. Sir, so, I hope you always smile, and I invite you to speak a few words about the 48th All India Sociological Conference, wearing that smile of yours. Thank you, Dr. Reshmi. Um, a warm morning to one and all present here. I uh, wholeheartedly welcome our Honorable Minister, Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan, sir, for this conference. He has readily accepted our Chancellor's invitation. Uh, and uh, our beloved Chancellor and uh, our respected uh, Vice Presidents, uh, Vice Chancellor, ma'am, Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, and Risha, ma'am, um, thank you for being with us today. So, I, I deem it a great honor in welcoming you all to the 48th edition of the All India Sociological Conference held in Velour Institute of Technology on the theme, the crisis of the 21st century and the way forward. The theme of the conference has been carefully scrutinized in such a way as to reckon with the vulnerabilities hampering the so societal growth and development. As it is highly crucial to cultivate adaptive governance structures, inclusive economic policies, and uh, resilient educational models for maintaining the social equilibrium in the 21st century. That has urged a multitude of crises, extending far beyond traditional boundaries, commencing from the profound impacts of climate change to the intricacies of social inequalities and the rapid evolution of technology shaping daily lives. So each of these challenges presents an intricate layers of chaos that demand rigorous sociological scrutiny, which has been deliberated through the four plenary sessions and three memorial lectures in the remembrance of pioneers of Indian sociology, such as Professor M. N. Srinivas, Professor Radha Kamal Mukherjee, and Professor Yogendra Singh, are delivered covering major crises of the contemporary world, such as the social inequality, environmental and health hazards, geopolitical disputes, and space explorations. The three-day conference has around 1,100 registrations attracting people from all over the nation and neighboring countries like USA, um, South Africa, and Bangladesh. And around 850 abstracts were received around, under the conference theme, which are to be under 28 research committees and two ad hoc groups 
of the Indian Sociological Society covering various branches of sociology. Thus, the 48th AISC would provide a great opportunity for budding, budding sociologists, scholars and students to establish their talents by presenting their knowledge through paper presentations and academic discourse. I am sure that the conference would be a limelight for many and would serve as an academic platform for the enrichment of the participants mediated by the academicians and pioneers of the discipline. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for briefing us about the conference. Moving on, our beloved Dean, School of Social Sciences and Languages, Dr. M. Manoharan, is known for his proactive leadership and commitment towards any initiatives undertaken by us. I must say, he has not left any stones unturned to foster growth and development of our department and the school. I humbly request you, sir, to share your thoughts on the school. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Chief Guest, Honorable Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services, Government of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Thirupalanivel Thyagarajan, Honorable Founder Chancellor, Respected Vice Presidents, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Indian Sociological Society's Office Bearers, Government Officials, Distinguished Awardees, Conference Delegates, Organizing Secretary and Committee Coordinators, Students, research scholars, press and media. Warm greetings and very good morning to one and all present here. I am here to briefly present about the school and the, its departments. The School of Social Sciences and Languages, SSL, established as a distinct entity in the year 2009. At present, it has four departments, 120 faculty members, 1,000 plus students, and 274 full-time PhD research scholars. Firstly, the Department of English with 51 faculty members offers various English language courses at different levels to UG and PG students and also offers PhD program in English literature and language, English language teaching. The Department of Commerce with 19 faculty members offers BCom General, BCom Banking and Capital Markets in association with NSE Academy, the National Stock Exchange Academy. That is that industry is uh, jo uh, jointly delivered program. And BCom Financial Technology, that is also in association with the NSE Academy. And we do a BCom Business Process Services in association with TCS Limited. And PhD programs in accounting, commerce, and taxation. We do have Department of Languages with 21 faculty members offer various foreign languages courses like Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Spanish, and PhD programs in Tamil, Hindi, French, and Spanish. Coming to the Department of Social Sciences, it has 29 faculty members on roll and from various disciplines like economics, sociology, psychology, social work, history, international relations, and music. The department offers MSW program and PhD programs in the domains economics, sociology, social work, and psychology. In addition to the above, the department offers 40 plus different courses as open electives, catering to the needs of the engineering undergraduate and postgraduate students of this institution. The department also offers minors in economics and minor in finance. School and the department periodically updating uh, and benchmarking its curriculum and syllabi with the global and national level institutions to enhance the value addition and to address the societal and industry needs. Finally, to mention about the research at the school level, SSL has the, has the following things uh, to its credit. So far, we do have 400 plus Scopus indexed uh, journal articles with impact factor ranging up to 12. 100 plus conference papers, 480 plus book chapters. The school's H index is at uh, 10 and I10 index at 11. The citation per paper uh, of the above is on an average 1.4. The research output of the school is doubling year after year in the recent uh, three, past three years. Our faculty members are engaged in consultancy, training, MDP and EDP, addressing the local community and the nearby industry needs. Our research has focused on multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary approaches, and emerging areas like UN Sustainable Development Goals. The school is currently having ongoing projects and consultancy worth 80 plus lakhs. 
The school is progressing to become one of the best humanities and social sciences schools in the country. And with that, I uh, conclude my introductory, uh, I mean, introduction about our uh, school and the constituent departments. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, for giving us a comprehensive understanding about our school. Now, we are moving on to acknowledge and honor our distinguished guests. Their presence adds immense value to the gathering. They play a pivotal role in shaping the narratives of this occasion. May I now request our founder and chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, to honor our esteemed guest, Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan, Honorable Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services, Government of Tamil Nadu, by presenting a memento as a token of our love, respect, and gratitude on behalf of the entire fraternity of VIT and all the delegates and guests who have gathered here. Thank you, sir. I request our chancellor, uh, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, to present a memento to Professor Abha Chauhan, president of the Indian Sociological Society, as a token of our love and gratitude. May I again request our Chancellor, sir, to present a memento to Professor Manish K. Verma, Secretary of the Indian Sociological Society, as a token of our love and respect. I request our Vice President, Shankar, sir, to present the memento. Thank you, sir. May I now request Professor Abha Chauhan to honor our founder and chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, by presenting a memento as a token of love and respect on behalf of the Indian Sociological Society. Ma'am, I request you again to present a memento to our respected Vice Presidents, Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan and Dr. G. V. Selva. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Professor Manish K. Verma to present a memento to our respected Vice Chancellor, Dr. Kanchana Bhaskaran V.S. Sir, I request you again to present a memento to our beloved Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Partha Sharthi Malik. I request you to present a memento to our dear registrar, Dr. T. Jai Bharati. All these mementos are presented on behalf of ISS family. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on. Our beloved Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Partha Sarthi Malik, was instrumental in ensuring the proper conduct of this conference. 
He has dedicated his precious time to engage with us, providing guidance and support. An excellent administrator, an outstanding researcher, and a keen academician enriched with the enthusiasm for excellence. Sir, it gives me great joy to invite you to address the gathering. Please. Thank you. Honorable Chancellor and the founder of this institution, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, Honorable Minister of IT and Digital Services, Dr. Palanival Tiagarajan, our chief guest of today, Honorable President and Secretary of Indian Sociological Society, our beloved Vice Presidents, Vice Chancellor, Register, Organizing Secretary, Dr. Prabhakal, the Dean of the School, my faculty colleagues, all delegates, stu my dear students, press and media, very good morning. At the outset, I would like to thank Indian Sociological Society for giving this op opportunity to host this conference at VIT Velour. I would like to welcome all the members of ISS in this campus. In, here we have 40,000 students from all states and union territories of India, from 67 countries. Students in this campus speak about, in about 50 languages. This itself is a small world in this part of the country. You will be very happy to know that VIT is now the eighth best university in the country. As per the Government of India ranking, we are the 11th best research institution of the country. In fact, our Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu visited uh, VIT. He said VIT should be the research hub. So we are doing good in research. In fact, In VIT, our approach in interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and transdisciplinary research is making us different. International collaborative research, massive internationalization in the campus is again is making us the difference, and the Quantity with quality approach is again making us difference. And these are the things, in fact, 34% of our research papers are internationally collaborative. The world average is 19% as per the Elsevier. And by 2025, we will make it 50%. This is slowly making VIT prominent in the world map. In fact, our Honorable Chancellor, always says, India should lead the world, VIT should lead India in higher education. We are slowly moving forward towards that. VIT, Valor Institute of Technology, the name suggests we are a good engineering institution, people know that. I'd like to share with you, my dear friends, that VIT is also good in non-engineering subject areas. In fact, in this school, the School of Social Sciences and Languages, we have 274 research scholars, 120 faculty members, more than 1,000 students. This is itself more than a college. We have agriculture, we have design, we have architecture, we have management, hotel management. This is truly a multidisciplinary institution. In international ranking, as I said that BIT is also slowly becoming reputed across the globe. In QS, recently published rank, we are among the top 500 in the world in sustainability ranking. Our ranking is 449th. In fact, in Asia, 
we are 163rd best university in Asia as per QS ranking. You will be happy to know that another very popular ranking agency, Shanghai, we are among the top seven in the country and within the top 700 in the world. I'm sure this conference is creating the opportunity for VIT professors and researchers to collaborate with some of the best sociologists of the country and abroad. Time has come now to connect the unconnected areas. Yes, I'm saying the sociology with engineering and science to connect. I'm sure that in this conference, you will discuss on that, address this issue, which is very important for the future researchers and the present researchers. I wish the, all the best, the success of this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring and encouraging words about VIT. Our respected Vice Chancellor in charge, Dr. V. S. Kanchana Bhaskaran, is truly an inspiration who has explored every avenue to enhance inclusivity and diversity within our institution. A perfectionist by nature, she was meticulously involved in bringing this conference to fruition. Ma'am, I humbly request you to felicitate the gathering. Good morning, all. Honorable Chancellor, sir. Honorable Minister, sir. Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services, Government of Tamil Nadu. Respected Vice Presidents. Professor Abha Chauhan, the President, Indian Sociological Society, New Delhi. Professor Manish Verma, the Secretary of Indian Sociological Society. Society and uh, the organizing committee members from ISS, Indian Sociological Society, and the 900 plus delegates who are ornamenting this event, the renowned uh, researchers from India and abroad, our Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Partha, Dr. Jay Parathi Registrar, the Dean, Dr. Manoharan, Dr. S. Prabhakar, the organizing secretary and all the coordinators for this good conference. I welcome you all. It's a privilege hosting the 48th All India Sociological Conference 2023. And uh, being a higher education institution, it is the responsibility of uh, the university to identify issues which can emerge in the future, foresee find it out and suggest solutions. As a multidisciplinary university, as Dr. Partha said, ranked high nationally and internationally, a holistic approach can be arrived at with the input from all concerned, with the contribution by all the schools and the research centers concerned. The theme of the conference being crisis of the 21st century and the way forward we know 21st century is the information technology era, which brings with it all the problems such as data breaching, data security, cyber security issues, and great technologies we have, enhancement of continuous, continuously developing technologies we have in our life. And it also brings in the ecosystem imbalance in the way uh, and uh, in that direction, we exploit the earth and the resources. Uh, looking at it, we are in a conundrum. We call ourselves living in a global village, but we find more complex situations arising among people, among territories, among countries, etc. Leave alone the continents, the climate change requiring the United Nations SDG coming into praxis, practice the sustainable development goals and the targets what we are setting ourselves, the health at the hazards what we see, and the biggest disruption what we had seen in our life, the recent times, that is a COVID pandemic. All these we find despite the technology advancement and the communication facilities what we have and the awareness what we goes with that. 
and the solution for all these rely on the academics and the researchers from all the higher educational institutions to forecast to analyze what is going to be the future identify and futuristically propose the research directions the seed of any idea which could influence the society the sociological factors way and the direction for the people to go forward hope the three days would bring in just that with the dissemination of knowledge with your research work sharing it among the core researchers and from the piece emergence of new year ideas methodologies and i wish all of you to become the catalyst to the instrument of uh, change catalystically create the change to bring a better world have a great time for all the three days i wish you great sessions ahead thank you all thank you for being here thank you ma'am for your insightful words i hope we reach your expectations of dissemination of knowledge and bring a change for a better world thank you ma'am moving on the lifetime achievement award is the pinnacle of recognition bestowed by the indian sociological society this award stands as a testament to the indian sociological society's commitment in acknowledging excellence and fostering inspiration within the field of sociology the award seeks exceptional indian sociologists whose contributions have been profound and extraordinary enriching the discipline of sociology itself this year's lifetime achievement award will be presented to two eminent sociologists professor chandrashekhar bhat former sociology of, former professor of sociology university of hyderabad and professor virginius khakha former professor of sociology delhi school of economics delhi university i invite professor ajay liu newmai former head center for the study of social exclusion and inclusive policy university of hyderabad to read the citation of professor chandrashekhar bhat please ma'am good morning na hearty congratulations to professor chandrashekhar bhat and also to professor virginia khaka for this prestigious lifetime achievement award of the indian sociological society um professor bhat is born on 23rd november 1944 in a remote village in kasaragod district uh, which is uh, airswell madras presidency and currently in kerala state professor bhat had his education in premier universities like karnataka university in dharwad delhi university and london university after his doctoral studies at the department of sociology delhi school of economics delhi university he began his teaching career at the university of mysore in 1973 and moved to the newly established department of sociology and anthropology at the central university of hyderabad Uh, in 1979 as one of the founding members of the department and continued till his retirement on 30th november 2006 professor bahad was invited as professor of eminence by tejpur university assam in january 2010 where he served till june 2013 during his five decades of academic service professor bahad besides building one of the well recognized and leading departments of sociology at the university of hyderabad provided leadership as the head three times of three years each ugc sap coordinator 1995 to 2006 and promoted the interests of the discipline as an expert member of ugc subject panel on sociology in 1996 to 98 as member of the managing committee 1992 to 1998 of the indian sociological society prasabhat has been instrumental 
in initiating the research committee 004 on migration and diaspora studies to include the newly emergent domain of research and teaching in India. Professor Bhatt's pioneering research and expertise in sociology of migration and diaspora studies were mentored particularly by Professor M.S.A. Rao at the Department of Sociology, Delhi University, and Professor Adrian C. Mayer under a postdoctoral program at School of Oriental and African Studies, London University in UK. He has the distinction of establishing India's first interdisciplinary center for the study of Indian diaspora in 1996 at the University of Hyderabad under the UGC Area Studies Program and also the privilege to introduce study and research in diaspora studies when the very term and concept of diaspora itself was less known in academic circles. This domain of research was further popularized with organization of nearly 10 national and international conferences and workshops. He facilitated the high-level committee on Indian diaspora, Ministry of External Affairs to finalize its reports by organizing a workshop for recommending new policies to officially breach India and Indian diaspora. The high-level committee on the Indian diaspora has put on record their high appreciation for Sabat's contribution to their endeavor. Besides a number of articles in international and national journals, book chapters, Professor Bhatt's publications include Sociology of Development and Change by Orient Longman, 1992, A Reader in Urban Sociology by Orient Longman, 1991, and Ethnicity and Mobility Concept Publication, 1984. Professor Bhatt is recipient of coveted Commonwealth Academic Staff Fellowship 1983 to 84, and the prestigious position of invited professor by University of Rouen, France, 2005. He was felicitated with appreciation by the Indian Diaspora International Center, New York, and Dio Gosin Foundation, Trinidad, at a conference at Banaras Hindu University, 2019. The Indian Council for Cultural Relations, Ministry of External Affairs, sponsored Professor Bhatt's visit as cultural ambassador to people of Indian origin diaspora countries, Guyana and Trinidad, on the occasion of the commemoration of 100th anniversary of legislation to end the Indian indentureship in March 2017. The Indian Sociological Society is honored to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Professor Chandra Shekhar Bhatt in appreciation and recognition of his meritorious services, accomplishments, and contributions to the discipline and the profession of sociology. Thank you, ma'am. It's my privilege uh, to invite Sir uh, please accept the award from our honorable chief guest, Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan. I request all the dignitaries from ISS to join. It would be really appreciated if you could please rise. This is a Lifetime Achievement Award.
Thank you, sir. May I now invite Professor Balaji Kendra? Yes, sir. Please come. I request you to speak a few words. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be standing in front of my sociological fraternity from all over the country and abroad. And uh, before the distinguished uh, uh, members here on the dais, uh, Honorable Minister uh, Palani Vail uh, Tyagarajan and uh, visionary founder builder of this uh, VIT institution, Dr. Vishwanathan, and uh, the uh, IS, ISS president, uh, Professor Rabha Chauhan, and Manish Tiwari, and other distinguished persons from VIT here before you. Uh, I thank uh, all of you, and through your elected members, yeah, elected members, uh, I have. Uh, this pleasure of receiving your um, award, the Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, I thank uh, the elected members, the President uh, Abba Chauhan and Secretary Manish Tiwari, and members of all the Managing Committee of Indian Sociological Society on this occasion, especially the person who read the citation, Dr. Ajaylu Numai. And uh, I and the words, kind words, which have been drafted by Professor Abba Chauhan for this honor. Thank you very much. And I, at this uh, occasion, remember, I have been made by all of you the sociological fraternity, then my colleagues and students in various universities where I have taught. I had the privilege of teaching in three universities, starting from Mysore University, then University of Hyderabad, which has been my, my karma bhumi for uh, 35, 40 years, where I have a close association not only with the faculty, but with the students. I have more than uh, uh, maybe 20, 25 students sitting here before me who are participating in this conference. And uh, I may also proudly mention that two of my students are going to receive here the MN Srinivas Memorial Prize. It's, there can't be a better uh, pleasure for any teacher. And I remember my two of my teachers who shaped me what I am, uh, Professor M.S. Rao, who introduced me to the study of migration. Migration is so central, I'm sure all of you will agree with me, because in this hall, I don't think there will be any one person who has not migrated. There are different kinds of migration. And uh, initially I was uh, introduced to migration within the country, urban, uh, rural to urban migration. And then under the postdoctoral fellowship, I was introduced by a very distinguished Indian uh, social scientist, uh, uh, Professor Mayer, Adrian C. Mayer, at the School of Oriental African Studies in London, who introduced me to study of overseas Indians, which today has become a key word, diaspora. And diaspora today occupies a much huge space than whatever when I started the studies with. Today, you find the Indians everywhere, more than 120 countries. I'm sure many of the uh, representatives of those people must be here studying in VIT. So thank you very much. I'm, uh, Deeply honored, and uh, it's a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good time in talks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I now invite Professor Balaji Kendre, Professor and Head, Department of Sociology, University of Mumbai, to read the citation of Professor Virginius Khaka. Sir, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Just a small correction, I'm former head. <laughs> so I'm here uh, to read a citation 
of uh, Professor Virginius Khaka for the purpose of Lifetime Achievement Award 2023 by Indian Sociological Society. Professor uh, Virginius Khaka, born on 24th September 1948 in the working class family in Rune Muteti State, Jalpaiguri District, West Bengal. Professor Virginius Kaka has had long and illustrious academic career as a distinguished and academic scholar. He is currently visiting professor at the Institute of, for Human Development, New Delhi. Prior to joining IHT, he was Professor of Eminence and Bharat Ratna Lokpriya Gopinath Bardoli Chair at Tejpur University. He was a professor and deputy director of the Institute of, uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Guwahati, and a professor at the Department of Sociology, Delhi University Economics. He taught at uh, Northeastern Hill University, Silong, from 1978 to 1990s. He was a member of National Advisory Committee under the erstwhile UPA government at the center and chairperson of high-level committee that studied the educational, health and economic status of the tribal communities in India. Professor Khaka completed his post-graduation in uh, sociology from the University of Pune in 1973. He was awarded a PhD for his thesis on agrarian social structure in peasant and plantation setting in North Bengal at IIT Kanpur in 1978. He had a postdoctoral fellowship under the Indo-French Cultural Exchange Program at Maison de Sciences de Home, Paris in 1982. He was a Commonwealth Academic Staff Fellow at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London in 1988. He was also Fulbright Fellow at the University of California, Santa Cruz, USA in 1998. He held Rajiv Gandhi Chair in Contemporary Studies at Northeastern Hill University, Silong, from 2006 to 2008. He had served in the various capacities in many important academic bodies, such as UGC, ICSR, National Council of Teacher Education and Anthropological Survey of India. Professor Kaka is the author of econo uh, book, Economic Dualism and Structure of Class, a study in plantation and peasant settings in North Bengal and uh, state, society, and tribal uh, issues in post-colonial India. He is also the co-author of the book Forest Lanterns, uh, a collection of essays on solution for nourishing India's uh, tribal children in uh, 2016, and work institutions. Uh, he also is the author of the book Work Institutions and Sustainable Livelihood, Issues and Challenges of Transformation. He also has written on uh, employment and uh, labor market in Northeast India, Interrogating Structural Changes, Handbook of Tribal Politics in India. He has been on the editorial advisory board of reputed institutional journals such as Asian Ethnicity, Social Change, History and Sociology of South Asia, Contribution to Indian Sociology and Sociological Bulletin. Professor Khaka's doctoral research focused on agrarian social structure and class relations in North Bengal, uh, but over the years he became interested in the academic and policy discourses on tribes in India. Uh, he was critical of its uh, homogenizing, monolithic and vacacious representations of the tribal history, society and politics. Uh, his examination of tribal situation presented the dynamics and complex nature of transformations among the tribes in India from colonialism and post-colonialism to new liberalism. The deep-rooted connections of tribes and Adivasis with their land, forest and territory, that is Jal, Jungal, Jamin, constituted the bedrock of his analysis. Decades of involvement with various tribal movements and his uh, precipient understanding of the ground realities have contributed unmatched academic precision to the teaching, publication and public interventions of uh, Professor Khaka. His identity as belonging to the tribal community has never taken precedence over his vocation as a sociologist and public intellectual. Professor Khaka has been a great advocate of 
comparative method as a means to challenge the ethnocentrism in the study of tribes. Kaka Committee report in 2014 published by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, the government of India is a, a case uh, in point. His family members, innumerable students, colleagues and friends have been recipient of his uh, sociableness and generosity. Kaka's vision has always been inclusive and approach is dialogic. His work has inspired generations of scholars in India and abroad. The Indian Sociological Society is honored to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Professor Vajinis Kaka in appreciation and recognition of his meritorious services, accomplishments, and contribution to the discipline and the profession of sociology. By, uh, on behalf of Abha Chavan, President, Indian Sociological Society. I request our respected founder and chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, to give the prize. I request all of you to please rise. Sir, would you like to speak a few words? Uh, distinguished dignitaries in the dais and respected delegates, uh, it's an honor to be a recipient of the Lifetime of Achievement Award from the Indian Sociological Society, a body of the sociologist, and in particular, I'm thankful to the president, Dr. Ava Chauhan, all the office bearers, the managing committee, and those who really made a decision to give this award to me, and even those who have proposed my name. A Lifetime Achievement Award, to my mind, is uh, is a long time journey, and in this journey, there are a lot of players who have been part of this let's venture. And I would like to rec recollect or acknowledge my gratitude to institutions where I have served, to begin with the Northeastern University when I was at prime of my youth, and moving into a world which was very different from the one that I experienced and learned a great deal from the students from the Northeast. Uh, the Lee School of Economics did transform me from what I was to a much more serious um, academics and researcher. Uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences did teach me to administer and try to build an institutions, although it was much more smaller. And I had immense love and respect at the institute, let's say at the university in Tejpur. And I'm really grateful to all the teachers, all my associates, the students who actually really saved me. Each institution has a good, patch, good space and bad patches and we all really go through it. And I have plenty of them, both good and bad. But that is what really saved me and I think that is how we should really keep in negotiating in our life. With these words, I just, again, I thank the Indian Sociological Society for this award. Thank you. Now we have the MN Srinivas 
Professor M. N. Srinivas Memorial Prize, which is presented annually to a young sociologist or a social anthropologist for publishing the best sociological and social anthropological paper in any of the social science journals or edited books published in India. Let me invite Dr. Lekha N. B., Assistant Professor, Department of Sociology, SN College, Chamber in the Trivandrum, Kerala, to come onto the stage and receive the award from our beloved Vice President, Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan. She has been awarded for her article titled Property, a Metaphor Beyond Economics, Exploring the Semiotics of Property Among the Nayas in Kerala, South India, published in the Journal of India and Asian Studies. I request our ISS dignitaries to join. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Dr. Alina Sebastian, Assistant Professor, National Institute of Advanced Studies, Bangalore, Karnataka, to come onto the stage and receive the award from our dear Vice President, Dr. G. V. Selvam. She has been awarded for her article titled Matrilini, Merchandise and Islam. A study of the case on the coastal belt of Telicheri, North Malabar, published in the journal Coastal Studies and Society. Congratulations, Alina. Congratulations, Lekha, once again. Moving on. Now we have the release of the Book of Abstracts. I humbly request our Chancellor, sir, to present the Book of Abstracts to our chief guest, Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan. We received 850 abstracts for presentations in the 31 research committees of the Indian Sociological Society and more than 1,100 registrations. As already said, we have participants from almost every state in India and we also have international participation from US, Bangladesh, and South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let me take this occasion to announce the launch of volumes based on ISS journal. For this, I invite uh, our president ISS, Dr. Uh, Professor Abha Chauhan, Thank you. Uh, I would like to inform this August gathering that uh, we are releasing the books based on articles published in our Hindi journal, the journal of Indian Sociological Society known as Bharti Samasha Samiksha. Before proceeding for that, I would also like to inform that uh, during the last uh, conference, 47th All India Sociological Conference at the University of Science and Technology, Meghale, uh, on the basis of the papers presented in the conference, we are bringing out a volume which uh, is published by Springer and will be released very soon. And for the launch of that, uh, you know, we are three editors, 
myself, Professor Ajayalu Nimai, Professor Tatu Masi, and if you can just come on the stage for a while. Uh, and uh, this uh, book will be released soon. And on the basis of the article, uh, papers presented during this conference at Velour, we will again bring out the volume. So this is the initiative Indian Sociological Society has taken to bring out the volume on the proceedings of the conference that are published and I'm sure the next team which will take over from 1st January 2024 will continue with this precedence. So this is the flyer of that volume. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, for, uh, Professor B.K. Nagla, uh, who is uh, the person instrumental behind this publication, which is published by Rawat Publications, Jaipur and Delhi. And I must say that Bharti Samasha Samiksha is a Hindi journal of Indian Sociological Society published by SAGE now. And, uh, it has series of articles over the years and we really wish that such, uh, such publication also work out, are published in other regional languages. And on the basis of the articles published since 2014, seven volumes have been produced, four of which are published and uh, I would request him, uh, Professor Nagla, to speak a few words about that and launch the book. So. Honorable dignitaries sitting on the dais, of the dais, distinguished scholars, dear colleagues, friends, and students. I have great pleasure that Professor Abha Chauhan, ISS president, has given me respons responsibility to coordinate for publication of the volume release today. Vision of uh, Professor IAP Modi and um, Professor Anand Kumar played a significant role to initiate uh, the Bharti Samasat Samiksha Hindi Journal, International Journal, which is published earlier by Ram. Uh, ISS has two journals, Sociological Bulletin and uh, Hindi Journal, uh, this Bharti Samasat. So keeping in view of the earlier trends, uh, the ISS has published the um, earlier volumes for this master some picture the articles inferred from these journal and we have brought seven volumes and they are edited by the seven peoples also one is a Indian sociology by Anand Kumar uh, the second is Mars by Paramjit Singh third is on Gandhi by uh, Professor Ajiv Gupta fourth by sociology of weaker section by uh, Vivek Kumar then uh, one journal by Ashish Kumar uh, on social mobility and one on social reality by Naresh Bhargav and, and another volume on uh, the conversation with the Indian sociologists which I edited. It is both in English and Hindi. So I am thankful to Professor Abha Chauhan and MC members, those who have given me responsibility. And I am thankful to the all contributors, those who have and given uh, contributed in these volumes. Thank you very much. Very much.
थैंक यू सो मच द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स क्योंकि ये पुस्तकें हिंदी भाषा में हैं मैं आपका धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगी कि आपने हमें एक मौका दिया एक अवसर दिया इन पुस्तकों को रिलीज़ करने का और विशेष रूप से मैं धन्यवाद करूँगी प्रोफेसर बी के नागला का जिन्होंने एक बहुत अथक प्रयास किया इन पुस्तकों को रिलीज़ करने का उनका प्रकाशन करवाने में रावत पब्लिकेशंस का एक बहुत बड़ा योगदान है और सभी व्यक्ति जिन्होंने इस इन पुस्तकों में अपने आर्टिकल्स या अपने शोध पत्र लिखे हैं बहुत सारे लोग यहाँ मौजूद हैं एक एक तो सात किताबें निकालना एक कोई छोटा काम नहीं है मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ संपादक को हर एक लिखने वालों को जिसमें प्रोफेसर विवेक कुमार और प्रोफेसर आनंद सर जो हैं वो यहाँ मौजूद हैं थैंक यू सो मच बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत आभार इस केस सीरीज एडिटर जो प्रेजेंट प्रेसिडेंट है आई के प्रोफेसर आभा चौहान शी इज सीरीज एडिटर ऑफ दिस वॉल्यूम ऑल्सो थैंक यू टू प्रोफेसर आभा चौहान ऑल्सो थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर जी विश्वनाथन इज द फाउंडर चांसलर ऑफ वेल्लूर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आर वी आई टी फैमिली पर्सनल प्राउड He was born on December 8, 1938 in a remote village Kottakuppam near Vellore in Tamil Nadu. His initial education was limited to his small village where he studied in Tamil his mother tongue. The expansion of his educational horizon began with his pre-university studies at Burhis College Vellore. He pursued and earned his bachelor's and master's degrees in economics from the prestigious Loyola College Chennai. Building on his academic foundation, he completed his law from Madras Law College. He entered Indian Parliament in his 20s, and that was something incredible during the 1960s. He was elected to Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly for 10 years. During this period, he served as a minister for two years. He founded. Vellur Engineering College in 1984 and what was started as a small college with only 180 students now has more than 68000 students in four campuses <laughs> Vellur Chennai Amravati Andhra Pradesh and Bhopal Madhya Pradesh We have we have 87000 students in four campuses in total His legacy like the institution's vision of transforming life through excellence in education and research is spreading across the nation and the globe i'm more than happy to invite our beloved founder and chancellor dr g vishwanathan for the presidential address sir please the chief guest of today's 48th all india sociological conference 2023 dr palanvel thiagarajan the president of the indian sociological society professor abha chavan secretary professor manish verma mr shankar viswanathan vice president dr gv selvam vice president of iit Dr. Kanchana Baskaran, Vice Chancellor; Dr. Parsa Dimalik, Provost Chancellor; Dr. Jaybar the Registrar; Dr. Manoharan Dean; Dr. Prabhakar the Organizing Secretary. The awardees: Professor Chandrasekhar Bhatt and Professor Virginia Skaka, and uh, senior professors from various parts of India, other sociologists. research students and other distinguished invitees members of the press and media very good morning to you i am happy that the sociological society chose vit to conduct this 48th all india conference and especially on an important subject the crisis of the 21st century the way forward and the way forward they say 19th century was the century of europe 20th century was century of america and 21st century is century of asia so we have a responsibility that this 21st century should overtake both 19th and 20th 
Sociology plays a very important role because it combines many subjects. And um, of course, uh, I was a student of economics, history, political science, and law. I find almost all of them are part of sociology. This is a great country, a great country of diversity with 1.4 billion people. And um, we call ourselves the largest democracy of the world. Democracy is divided into two. One is full democracy. The other one is flawed democracy, F-L-A-W-E-D. This is done by economists. 24 countries come under full democracy. About 48 countries come under flawed democracy. In the democracy ranking, our ranking is number 46. India's is 46, according to them. In order to become a full democracy, we have to do many things. Of course, the political parties and the governments play a major role. India is the only country where you have 2,700 political parties nowhere in the world. Nobody can compete with us because all of them have a few parties. <laughs> America has only two parties. And uh, I'm not going into details, but I would just to like to inform you that we aspire to become a full democracy, which means there is a big role for political parties state governments and the union government. And as far as economics concerned, we are one of the fastest growing economies of the world. I'm happy about it. In the last few years, we have overtaken two countries, France and UK, and come to the fifth position, fifth largest economy of the world. In fact, in November, we have entered $4 trillion. Our GDP has entered $4 trillion. We are very happy about it. But when you go to the per capita income, in the GDP, our ranking, total GDP, our ranking is number five in the world. In per capita income, our ranking is 139 in the world because it's only $2,600. There, we have to, of course, one is due to population. The other one is we have to produce more. We have to work hard and produce more. I always compare ourselves with China. That's the only country comparable to us in population. In 1960s, or even 80s, up to 80s, we were almost together. They opened up in 1980s, we opened up in 1991. I think it's exactly to 78. Professor Deng started opening the economy. Ours was done when Narsim Rao and Manmohan Singh combination was there as, uh, in the cabinet, 91. At the time, the difference between India and China was only $20 in per capita income. Ours was 224, they were 244. Now, in the last 40 years, the difference, we are 2,600, they are 12,600. 10,000 difference has come. I am always concerned about it. Why can't we compete with them? What is it that we lag behind? Why we are lagging behind? I think sociologists should suggest what should be done. Of course, we have problems because this is a country of great diversity. We have, as far as languages are concerned, we have, even though the Constitution has recognized 22 languages, according to census, major languages spoken in the country are 121. If you include dialects, it is many thousands. And, um, there is another thing which is not there anywhere in the world in this country, it's called caste. There is no country with caste system. This is the only country which started with four castes. Now we have 25,000 castes. 
So these are certain things where we have problem. We have to cross these problems and compete with the world. And um, sociologists must know everything and uh, they must suggest to the society and the country how it can be overcome. And um, we are quickly urbanizing. They say by uh, another two, four, five years, almost one third or one fourth of the population will be living in urban areas. It means we have a problem. The unplanned urbanization will lead to problems. And also, population growth, with everybody wants a house, we are losing our agricultural land, which has not been considered by any government so far. That, that can be resolved. You want a house, you will have a house, but at the same time, we should not lose our agricultural land. The other day, I, well, two weeks back, I was in Bangkok. My room was on the 26th floor. I was able to see the entire city. It looks like New York. I come to our cities, Chennai city, Madras in those days. I visited as a student first time in 1957 to go for my admission. I saw the tallest building in Mount Road in Anna Sale, LIC building. After 60 years, that is the tallest building, even now. That is the kind of growth we have. I think it is the duty of all the governments to encourage more skyscrapers, tall buildings, so that people will have houses, but at the same time, we will not lose our land, agricultural land. That's a very important thing. I want the sociologists to consider this point and tell them. And um, we have natural disasters. How is it that we can prevent or we can escape from natural disasters? These are also part of uh, the conference. And of course, in the 21st century, we have technological advancement, economic advancement also, like uh, in technology, we have artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. These are important developments which has taken place and we should make use of them because this is a country with a lot of superstition. Only science and technology can replace superstition and our youngsters should be aware of these things. Of course, they study well, but at the same time, they don't get any help from the government. In fact, the other day I was telling we have 40,000 students in this campus. I was just to find out how many of them get government help. Only 800 students get scholarship from both union government and state government put together. 800 students get scholarship. The rest of them are financed only by the parents. It is time now that we spend more on education, both the union government as well as the state government so that all of them will have the opportunity to get higher education. Now only the elite are able to get it. The poor and the middle class are not getting it because out of 14,000 children eligible for higher education according to 2011 census, in all of our colleges and universities put together, there are only four crore students, 11 crore are outside waiting to be called into the universities and uh, colleges. It is time now that we concentrate on education so that we will become also an advanced country. Without higher education, it's not possible for us to compete with the Western nations. And it is time now that the sociologists deal with all the subjects and suggest to the governments and the society and of course political parties that we should concentrate on education and try to develop this society. And the other only important thing I want to mention is even though we are growing, the benefits of economic growth is not reaching all. I don't know how many of you studied that. In economic inequality, India is becoming one of the worst countries of the world. 
the top 10% of the population of this country own 80% of the wealth of the country. The bottom 50%, they own only 6% of the property wealth. But when it comes to payment of tax, for example, GST, that's the one which gets the maximum uh, amount to the uh, government. In GST, the bottom 50% pays 64% of the tax, and the top 10% who own 80% wealth of the country, they pay only 4%. I think you must study this and tell the people that it is time to do something so that this inequality can be brought down. In fact, we have overtaken U.S. in inequality. The top 1% of the population in U.S., they own 37% of the wealth of the nation. In India, the top 1% own 58% of the wealth of the nation. That is the how we have overtaken U.S. in inequality. We have to overtake them in many things. In fact, I am always thinking that one state in, uh, in US, California, whose population is only four crores, their total GDP is almost equivalent to India. I think last year it was 3.6 trillion or 3.7 trillion. How is it possible for one state with four crore population compete with 140 crores population in the big country. What is it that we should do to compete with them so that we can also become like them? Their per capita income is $80,000. We are in 2,600. These are the things we have to be considered, and uh, it is time now that the sociologists, because you are supposed to know everything, and uh, the duty of the sociologists to approach a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary approach for solving all these problems. And you are all here, senior people are here, and the youngsters are also trying to learn from you. I would like to suggest all this to the government so that we will also become an advanced country, and uh, our students, our youngsters also will be able to compete with the rest of the world. And I would like to thank individually all the delegates who are participating here, who are come to Vellore. Um, I hope your com our stay will be comfortable, and I wish you all the best. I would like to thank our minister. He, it's a great difficulty. He was in Delhi. We have to bring him here. He comes from a very well-known family of Tamil Nadu. I don't know how many of you know about him. Uh, his grandfather was Sir P.T. Rajan, who was in the South India was one state at that time. That's how from Kasargod, Mangalore to Berhampur, it was one state, Madras province. In that province, there was a party called Justice Party, which was ruling from 1920 to 1937. In that cabinet, he was a minister and also a chief minister, his grandfather. He is the third generation minister. <laughs> I, I, I have met him as a student. His father was a, the speaker of Tamil Nadu Assembly and also a minister, Pranivel Rajan. And uh, of course, I was very close to him. Now I am happy that the son of the grandson and son of that family, he is here. I thank him personally for taking time and come and to address us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing you, your thoughts on the central theme of our conference. Moving on, uh, I invite Ms. V. Kirtana to introduce our chief guest of the day, Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan, Honorable Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services, Government of Tamil Nadu. Kirtana. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan, popularly known as PTR, is a man of simplicity and equity. He currently serves as the Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services in Tamil Nadu government. Sir has earned a B.Tech degree from NIT Trichy, MS in Operation Research, and a PhD in Engineering Psychology from the State University of New York at Buffalo, and an MBA in Finance from the MIT Solomon School Management. 
Sir began his political career in 1990s as an independent consultant in operations and system improvement. Sir has also worked in the Standard Chartered Bank, Singapore. He served as the member representing the United States on the International Standards Organization Committee. He holds a patent on the title Methods and Systems for Providing Structured Loan Commitment Transactions. Following the footsteps of his grandfather and father, Sir has commenced his political career in the year 2016. Thus, shifting from cracking balance sheets of high-profile companies to solving the concern of a common man. Until 2023 cabinet reshuffle, he served as the Minister of Finance and Human Resource Management. With his pleasing demeanor and confidence, he blends modernity with legacy together, witnessed in his political and policy views, which are predominantly shaped by his observations from the diversity of culture around the world and the universality of human beings. On behalf of the staff management, I would like to take an opportunity to welcome you, sir. I'm sure that your insights will truly inspire us. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Good morning to the Chancellor, Elder Statesman of our Tamil community, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, the Vice Presidents, my good friends, Shankar Vishwanathan and G. V. Selvam, the Administration of the University, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, the Office Bearers of the ISS, the President, Professor Abba Chauhan, the Secretary, Professor Manish Verma, the Organizing Secretary of the Conference, Dr. Prabhakar, the Dean who gave us a good overview of the school, the delegates, the faculty, the students, the press. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here, though it was a long journey, I must say. I was in Delhi yesterday, I flew back to Chennai last night, left at 5.30 this morning, and I'm headed back in about 10 minutes when I finish speaking. But I thought it was very important to be here, partly because of my respect and long association with the Chancellor of the University. They do such tremendous work, and as our Chief Minister said, they can certainly serve as the example of the role model of the quality of education in Tamil Nadu. I won't repeat the statistics, but um, it is clearly the preeminent university at a national level uh, that we have here, a private university. It's rare to find an institution of such excellence and scale. It's very easy to maintain excellence when you have a few hundred or a few thousand students. And it's much, much harder to scale it to, in this case, 87,000 students. 40,000 on this campus alone. So first I must congratulate them and uh, thank them for hosting this conference. I also think that uh, it's very apt that this society, which is so important to our uh, progress as a society, I mean the sociological society, but as a community, as a country, as a democracy, uh, is holding its annual conference here, the 48th conference. It's been in existence as a society for now 70 odd years, which I think is heartening to me. And I particularly like the theme of this conference, which is the crises of the 21st century and the way forward. Since it's a three-day conference and there's many academics here, uh, I want to just throw out a few thoughts that I had as I was coming down this morning about the kinds of crises, the root cause of these crises, or at least the causes, and what I see as some of the way forward. But if I start listing the crises, at least from the ones that are most intractable and most, you know, deeply problematic, I would start first, especially for those of who you who live in Tamil Nadu, or uh, have relatives in places like Chennai or uh, Tudukurin. Climate change, global warming, 
the changes in nature and our inability to predict or control these changes and their consequences and in some sense the shape shifting of viral uh, genetics and coming to the the nature of pandemics i think by far in the last decade or two have taught us that these are the most profound problems and crises we face today at a slightly lower complexity because they are man made and mad controllable to some extent the notion of armed conflict especially those with civilian casualties like you're seeing in Ukraine and Gaza are in against the nature of humanity and the progress of human kind when innocent civilians are being uh, killed in armed conflict in this scale i would say at the next level going down into maybe the causality the decaying or the crumbling of institutions and i think the role of institutions like the united nations which once had significant heft and impact and when they said something it meant something and the ability or the lack of ability i should say of the un to do anything really substantive either in the ukraine or in uh, gaza is indicative i think of a global decaying this is not just happening for multinational or, or international institutions but also within countries the nature of government the role of democracy the independence of institutions all of these are decaying at a rapid rate i would even extend that to the role of uh, regulatory bodies and institutions like the press which have become largely bought or sold and uh, the true independence doesn't seem to exist anymore and i think even more profound than that is the fact that we have this huge amount of unemployment underemployment a lot of poverty and in some sense a reversal of the decades of progress that we had been seeing let's say from the second world war through the 90s through even the 2000 era where there was a steady improvement in the alleviation of poverty in the upliftment of the quality of life in the reduction of number of people that had less than full rights all of those seem to be unraveling in the last 15 20 years of this century what are some of the causes i was just minded that we live in an era of hyper globalization though uh, those of us who are bit students of history will realize this is not the first era of globalization certainly the roman empire certainly the days of colonial rule there was a lot more integrated global economies and then they separated again but this age of globalization is unique in the sense that it's hyper globalization uh through the integration not just of economies of trade of transport but also of labor also of uh, capital markets also of services delivered through the wires and of global commerce through the internet this hyper, hyper globalization has created in many ways one universal marketplace uh, electronically in, the, in terms of the internet but also in terms of manufactured goods effectively the supply chains are integrated all over the world and what it has led to on the plus side is unprecedented wealth creation if you go back and look mathematically the notion of a country like china taking a billion 300 million people or so from as the chancellor said 200 dollars to 12000 dollars in less than 30 or 40 years is unprecedented nowhere in history has that much wealth been created because of the sheer scale of the people who have been uplifted but what it has also led to is extreme disparity those of you who are students of macroeconomics or global trade will know that almost always deregulation the lifting of barriers internationalization will lead to increased wealth creation and increased aggregate gdp growth rates and international wealth creation it will almost always also lead to increased disparity unless you have conscious government programs and very tailored and nuanced steps intended to prevent that from happening this rapid increase in wealth will also result in rapid increases in disparity it's an automatic it happens in parallel 
In fact, such increases will exacerbate the otherwise somewhat hidden weaknesses in the nature of democracy. And what are those? Primarily because it is very hard in a democracy, even the best democracies of the world, to separate money and politics. So if you have unprecedented wealth creation, that wealth will lead to a further subversion of the natural weakness of democracy through the application of wealth in one-sided ways that removes the notion of a level playing field that creates arbitrary you know, barriers to entry that protects the strongest and leaves the weakest where they are. This is even further compounded by the fact that we now live in an era of online lives where people's profiles can be built based on what they like, what they see. And through that, with the natural reduction of attention spans that is happening as the glut of online information increases, then you will end up with greater polarization because people will be fed more and more of the same content that reinforces their limited understanding of something and excludes them from being fully informed and seeing a diversity of views. The consequence of all this, I think, is a deterioration in the nature of politics and a clear deterioration in the nature of political leadership. If you look at the country or you look at the world today, you have people who are very good at polarization, very good at uh, winning elections, very good at divisive mathematical calculus, but there's almost a dearth of statesmanship. Think around the world today, are there global leaders who have the capacity to speak with moral authority against something that is profoundly, fundamentally against human nature or human values, like the murder of innocent civilians. And there's very few people who are either willing or able to do that. And when they are willing to do that, they have actually diminished their own status by doing very kind of divisive politics focused on the lowest common denominator in their own countries. So the more internal politics gets degraded and debased to this kind of polarization and, and kind of uh, um, vote calculus, the 30%, 35%, 40% that is needed to win an election, the more the global community suffers because there are only local chieftains and everybody's worried about their home ground, their home turf, and they're not able to really play at a global level. And we have this hugely hyper-integrated global economy with very little global thought leadership or moral leadership or statesmanship. So it's a pretty bleak picture, actually, if you ask me. But is there a way forward? And I think uh, as I was coming down, I was thinking about seven or eight things which I think could make a profound difference. And I think the first, if you look around the country and certainly look around the world, is to profoundly improve the quality and access to education. So if you look, not only is it about who has access to education, it's about how much education they have access to. If you look at country to country, state to state, city to village, any of these differences you find that where education is emphasized, particularly elementary education, and where it is universal, boys and girls get the same access, all communities get access, compulsory education is either enforced or incentivized through things like free breakfast, free lunch. These are the areas where you actually start creating the capital, the human capital that is going to be the pool from which you're going to develop tomorrow's workers, tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's um, uh, statesmen who are better than today's. The good news is I think many, many places of the world are realizing that. I was on a tour of uh, six or seven universities in the US last month. I took my younger son who's an 11th class student and we stopped at uh, very prestigious universities, Chicago, Brown, MIT, Harvard, uh, Yale, Columbia. And in Chicago, I was very surprised to learn that that's where the birth of the field of sociology happened, otherwise seen as a very strong technical school in things like biology or biological sciences or economics. 
the notion of the degree of sociology of the field of sociology actually was uh, first born at the University of Chicago, funded by Rockefeller's money back in the day. And at my old school at MIT, they are so focused now that the students should learn adequate subjects in humanities. So they require that whatever specialization you're doing in one of the best technological universities in the world, you have to be uh, taking at least four or five core courses in the humanities early in your education. So I think the nature of education, the universality of access, and the quality of the study to include things like humanities rather than just the skill that will get you employed, I think will create better citizenry and that might be the single biggest hope for creating a better tomorrow and working our way through these crises. The second, I think, is a focus on reducing inequality to the extent possible. Now, in any capitalist model, it's very difficult to eliminate inequality. But if you look around the world, those societies that have succeeded to some extent in keeping inequality to a lower level, keeping the Gini coefficient lower, tend to have better outcomes. I can talk about that internationally, but I can also talk about that domestically. If you look at a state like Tamil Nadu, one of the reasons we do relatively well and have relatively high per capita consumption, even as a function of the total economy, compared to other advanced states like Maharashtra or Gujarat, Tamil Nadu has a very high per capita consumption equation because we have lower Gini coefficient, we have greater spread of the wealth. As scientists and as administrators, I think the third thing we can do is collect a lot more data and analyze it. And if we are smart, we pre-program in certain limits or certain actions based on the data. So for example, uh, in the old days, we were not collecting nearly enough data because we didn't have collection efficiency and we didn't have infinite storage like we do today. But if we can collect the data and analyze it, we actually understand what is happening. It's very hard to fight inequality if I don't know how much inequality there is. And not a lot of the economy is visible to us. In Tamil Nadu, we do a lot of that. I think as a country, as, as the world, we need to do a lot more. We have arrangements with people like MIDS, with JPAL. We do surveys beyond the NSSO. We look at extent of housing access, extent of penetration of welfare programs. And this data will help us. And if we set automatic limits or automatic uh, actions. So when, when I was in finance, for example, after 30 years of not actually indexing the government's revenues to inflation, we started doing that. Think about it. Most governments in India today, all our expenses are automatically or statutorily indexed to inflation. The DA increases in the payrolls and pensions or the cost of running programs or subsidies is automatically indexed to inflation because that's the world we operate in. But most of our income is fixed. We have no indexation to inflation. Many, many advanced economies figured out how to solve this problem years or decades ago. Nobody in India had done it. In uh, Tamil Nadu, under my chief minister, when I was in finance for the first time, we started indexing some revenues to inflation so that the state's revenues keep up with its expenditure, which is automatically indexed in inflation, uh, in, in, in inflation indexed. And if we do that, we can keep the inequality down by spending these revenues rather than going into a debt trap. The fourth thing I would say is institutions like universities, like research uh, labs, like think tanks, to take these data points and do analysis and suggest adaptations and solutions to how we can maintain a more equitable and a more just and humane society. The fifth thing I would say is what all advanced economies have shown us, which is to devolve power to the local government so you can have local self-governance, that is from the center to the state, the state to the local bodies, because the odds of any elected official being held accountable by the voters substantially increases when the ratio is five or 10,000 is to one. If you're a local body councillor, in a village, it's probably 1,000 is to 1 in Tamil Nadu. In a city, it's probably 8,000 or 10,000 is to 1. By the time you come to an MLA, it's about 2.5, 3 lakh is to 1 in Tamil Nadu, probably 4 lakh is to 1 in UP. And by the time you come to an MP, 
is probably 15 or 20 lakh, 25 lakh is to 1. The odds that that MP can be held accountable by those voters is exactly zero. So you're not fostering democracy at all. You're fostering an authoritarian shift of power towards a party leadership, towards a brand, towards a place where money can create a jet stream where any candidate can be elected and you're no longer representing the people's concerns. So the more you have the scale of a Singapore, Australia, Canada, where 30,000 people, 40,000 people have an elected representative, the more likely those elected representatives actually are held accountable and therefore behave in a way that they will be able to answer the electorate. We don't have anywhere near that ratio. The next thing I would say is to create level playing fields and transparent and efficient markets so that it is not a rigged insider game and because it's perceived to be a rigged insider game, many people choose not to participate and you have highly inefficient outcomes uh, where a few grab everything. The Chancellor gave many of the statistics that I myself was going to talk about, which is the extent of concentration of wealth grossly exaggerated in the hands of a few, which means clearly that we don't have level playing fields and the markets are not transparent or efficient. If you look around the world today, those places that have managed to maintain a middle, a middle class, a middle tier of enterprises, MSME enterprises, a middle a level of industries or institutions or universities rather than only a few big ones. Of course, we all need some big ones, but if you have only three or four big ones, nothing else in the middle, medium, small, and then you only have like small family businesses, you have a highly inefficient market structure. You take places like Germany, where there's a vibrant industrial economy, they have a huge MSME uh, base that actually has world-class skills of manufacturing, of robotics, of innovation, in companies that employ 300 people, 500 people that do 200 million a year in business, 50 million a year in business. This middle tier is crucial. And if you look again, relatively speaking in Tamil Nadu, one of the great advantages we have is that we have many, many more small and medium enterprises, micro enterprises. They create jobs at a much more rapid scale. It costs about one, one and a half lakh rupees of capital to create a job in a MSME sector. And it costs about 30 lakhs of capital to create one job in heavy manufacturing, at least. These days that ratio is more like one crore or one and a half crores because of the automation. Now there'll be second order, third order OEM and indirect employment benefits, but still the ratio is not in the same frame, one and a half lakh to one and a half crore. You'd have to create 100 times the secondary and tertiary jobs to be as employment efficient as the MSME sector. If we allow this kind of concentration to go on and this slide to everybody only watches their own corner, their own pocketbook, and you allow this exaggeration and concentration, what you're going to find is that the benefit of the commons gets eroded all the time. And the rights of the commons and the future of the commons are at stake. And I think the clearest example of that is how little progress we're able to make on reducing the impact of greenhouse gases, trying to combat climate change, and trying to preserve the environment, which ought to be everybody's priority. It ought to be the first common good for all citizens of all countries, rich and poor, around the world, ought to be trying to keep environmental sustainability. And yet we have COP after COP after COP, and we don't really seem to be making progress. The ability to come to focus on the common good seems to be lost in parochial concerns, whether that's individual industrial parochial concerns or whether that is, uh, uh, you know, country by country, uh, fossil fuel country compared to green energy country, the, the, the battle is not even. So these are some of the thoughts I had about the crises the causes and what could be potentially solutions. But I think such conferences are vital. I'm very happy that all of you are here today in Tamil Nadu, in Vellore, at VIT. I hope the next two, three days will be very fruitful and productive for you individually, for all of us collectively as society. 
I think the themes are increasingly relevant and very well selected. Uh, number one, increasing social inequalities and conflict and violence. What is the way forward? Number two, which I would have actually put it number one, environment and health concerns, issues and prospects. Number three, challenges and crises in sustaining society. And I think Tamil Nadu, though we are far from perfect, broadly speaking, I think we are well ahead of the national average and can actually be an example in many ways for the rest of the country. And then, of course, the future, which is about space exploration, earthly challenges, so forth. So I, I uh, thank you once again for inviting me. I wish you all a productive and uh, fun conference filled, filled with friendship, camaraderie, the exchange of ideas. Um, we're very happy to have you here. We hope you'll develop interesting insights and uh, future plans that will help all of us in society. You're doing very important work. Uh, please continue to do so. Thank you. Yes, sir, we sociologists are very important people. The concerns highlighted by you, like poverty, global polarization, disparity in multiple domains, all these are highly relevant issues in the present scenario. And, but they also offer tremendous scope for research when it comes to sociology. So without further ado, I'm moving on. May I now call upon Professor Manish Verma, to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the entire family of Indian Sociological Society. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Palanivel Thaigar Razan, uh, Honorable Minister for Information Technology and Digital Services, Government of Tamil Nadu, Chief Guest on this occasion, Dr. G. Viswanathan, Founder and Chancellor, VIT, Professor Abha Chauhan, President, Indian Sociological Society, the distinguished guest on the dais, esteemed academician of the dais, my dear student friends and various academicians assembled over here from different parts of the country. Uh, we are really delighted to be part of this August gathering. And it is more heartening to know that we are uh, here to commemorate the 48th All India Sociological Conference and the theme selected for this year conference is the crisis of the 21st century and the way forward. Well friends, we are facing various kinds of crises in this world and the crises are coming from the process of ijation. When I talk about ijation, these ijations are globalization, urbanization, modernization, and industrialization. We can see we are into the world of artificial intelligence, we are into the world of chat GPT, we are also in the world of you know human cloning. So we have created an artificial kind of world in which we are struggling uh, to attain our goals which we have set forth for ourselves. Actually, we have created surplus needs and also we have created surplus consumptions also and at the same time, these needs and consumption has created uh, a problem of disposal of waste also which is a big challenge in this world. So we are, in a way, we are in a, uh, we are vying for a sustainable vying for sustainable development in a most unsustainable world and unsustainable consumption patterns. We can see we are in wars, we are in acute crisis. The war is between Russia and Ukraine which is going on right now and which has started the world across the globe. We have also witnessed Gaza and Israel war and we are also seeing various kinds of crises. A few of them is in the form of environmental crisis. We are witnessing global warming, climate change, manifold health issues, 
urban agglomeration and creation of slums. Development is also showing, you know, offshoots uh, in the present era wherein we are uh, seeing so many cases of involuntary displacement. We also have climate refugees. Uh, it is also because of the problem of environmental debacle. We have also witnessed which appeared in the lecture of Honorable Minister and Honorable Chancellor also that we have economic, large scale economic disparity. Poverty is uh, looming large on the society. We also have food insecurity. So now we need to evolve a sustainable future and how to do that is a mood challenge in front of us. I have not much time to deliberate upon this uh, issue because uh, I have to extend vote of thanks to the dignitaries uh, assembled over here. So I will not go into the details. So I'll take this opportunity to thank our honorable uh, chief guest on this occasion, uh, Minister of Information and Technology, Dr. Pana uh, Palaniwal Thaigar Rajanji, for sparing his valuable time out of his busy schedule. As he was saying that he was extremely busy, and today itself he landed in Chennai, and somehow he could manage to reach to this place. That shows his commitment towards the academics and also towards the gro uh, growth and sustainability of the society. I also thank uh, Dr. G. Viswanathan, the founder of VIT, the visionary, uh, and, and, it, and his uh, uh, life is itself an inspiration for all of us because, you know, I was talking to people and people told me that he is having diverse blend of personality from a, 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 a film producer and director, he was also a parliamentarian and also uh, you can see all across India, students are getting uh, technology degree under his, you know, uh, leadership. That is that is a marvelous achievement, and I'll request all the August gathering over here to give a big clap for Dr. Viswanathan. <laughs> and also, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Viswanathan pro for providing us the logistics, the basic infrastructure, and all kinds of facilities for hosting this 48th All India Sociological Conference. I'm also th thankful to Dr. Prabhakar, the organizing secretary of this conference, for putting day and night for making this conference a huge success. I'm uh, equally thankful to all the officers, including the vice chancellor, the pro-vice chancellor, the vice president, and all the uh, um, uh, deans and all the eminent uh, academicians who are sitting just in, uh, uh, in front of us on the dais for making this conference a huge success. This conference could not have been a success without the help of the technical support staff, the back staff, and all those who are doing various kinds of supporting services uh, living in the background. So I'll, I'll, I, I'm extremely thankful to all of them also. I'm equally thankful to the media persons and all the police persons and all those who have in a way or other supported uh, this conference. So I think the coming three days deliberation would be uh, proved to be very fruitful for making this conference a huge success. And also, I'm very much optimistic that the deliberation will churn out some very positive and uh, uh, future uh, prospect for uh, going for the solutions for the crisis which we are facing at this moment of time. So thank you all for sparing with us and giving us opportunity to serve you here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your words of gratitude. Now we have national anthem. I request all of you to please rise. <laughs> Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Kalavanga, Vindhya, Himachala, Yamura, Ganga, Uchala, Jaladhita, Ranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashisha, Mage, Gahe Tava Jaya Gadha Janagar 
ಮಂಗಳ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ i have a set of announcement first we have a photo session i request the dignitaries to be there on the dais for 2 minutes and i also request the mc members managing committee members to be ready and please the audience please be be, be seated you are not allowed to leave the hall before the dignitaries leave please please cooperate please Managing committee members please come on to the dais <laughs> 